Our next guest is an actor, an activist, who you know and love as Nathan on the hit show, Insecure. Yes. Please welcome Kendrick Sampson. So, how you doing? How you feeling? Love you, love you, love you. Good, good, good. It's so oh, great to have you. you. Welcome, thank welcome. You, thank you. I you appreciate know, that. You moved to L.A. Uh, from my home, old stepping grounds, Houston. Oh, hold up. Oh, prayer if you go. <laughs> oh, hold up, for yeah. real? You went to BB? <laughs> I feel that. I you love know, that. You were 18 years old. Um, did you have dreams of Hollywood then? Of course, yeah. I started acting like when I was in fifth grade, which we won't say what year that was, but you know, I was back in, <laughs> back in the day, you know, I was, I, I used to do impressions for my family mm -hmm. and they used to love like me doing Bill Clinton or like oh, Tina really? Turner or something. And, and I was like really, really little. So like, when I- Can I, we hear a little something, something? I, no. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> and no. He said we were no. little. Uh, no. Listen, you know, I get paid for that now. No, no, I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. No, I used to do, I used to try to do, you know, What's Love, got to do it, some impression from some scene on there, like some Bill Clinton thing. That's so cool. And when I finally figured out I could do that and get paid for it and that people actually right. did this on stage and, and it was fun, we you know did a play in school, I was like, there's no turning back. And I told my mom, I was like, I want to do, I want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. And she gave me a newspaper and she, you know, she gave me the Houston Chronicle. <laughs> and, she, and she was like, all right, find an agent. And my mama raised me to be like that. So I looked through the Houston Chronicle, 10 years wow. old, just going through, and I found an agent. I called him up, and uh, they called my mama like, all right, a 10-year-old just called us. Uh, Setting uh, up an appointment to, to meet yes. with us. Is this OK? And she said, as long as he does the work, I'm good. So I started training, didn't ever look back. I love That's it. That's amazing. I want to find out. So you started pursuing acting. Mm -hmm. How was it? Like, what struggles did you face, like, trying to book a gig? I mean, a whole lot of racism and inappropriate roles for young people when Speak I first got it. out mm. there. I, I didn't want to play some kid going to jail. I had a lot of family members that, you know, were criminalized, and I just didn't want, especially my brothers and sisters yeah. and my nephews and nieces, and I didn't want to portray that. And, and I wanted, you know, black mentors. So when I mm. finally, I thought I could escape the racism in Texas, right. you know, the, in the entertainment industry in Texas. So I moved to LA, like there would be more opportunity. Right. And I was like, you know, there's less racism in LA, right? <laughs> 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 the good thing is I did find some incredible mentors. You know, um, I got, you know, this woman named Marilyn Bobian, Troy Rowland, Richard Lyon. Oh. Oh, nice. A bunch of folks that, you know, Dustin Felder, rest in peace and power, um, that has inspired so many young black actors. Mm -hmm. And they led me in the right direction and right. surrounded me with just really beautiful love. Made sure I eat. I was broke as hell. I was sweeping up around the studio right. trying to, you know, pay for acting classes because sure. I didn't have the money. But they would make their their families would make sure I was fed and it was just really nice. a strong community builder. Still had all the racism and right. stuff, right? <laughs> but it helped me get to the next gig, right. you know, and to turn down those roles and to feel good about it. Good. Even when I didn't have nothing on my resume and my agents were like, you gotta take something. You broke. Yeah. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I think that, you know, all of this mm -hmm. made you want to fight social injustices. Course, yeah. And you've been a co-creator of your own nonprofit organization called Build Power. Uh, let's talk about that. What is it? It's uh it's our effort, me, Tia Osho, Mike De La Rocha were doing all we were I mean, trying to figure out and brainstorm and experiment with so many different ways on how to organize Hollywood, you mm. know, black and brown folks and, and white folks in Hollywood and, you know, and build an intersectional coalition of Asian American, Pacific Islander, and all so types great, of, yeah. and, and trans folks and folks yeah. that are marginalized in our, in our community. And it's difficult. So we, we, all of the different efforts, all the trial and error we went through, we decided to streamline into an organizing organization, right? Somebody right. who gets out there and tries to organize Hollywood because we realize we have to be really intentional about it because this Absolutely. is the propaganda machine. So what do you yeah. guys do? Like we um, we put all, we we connect Hollywood with radical 
movement, you know, with the organizers, the people, the heroes, the folks that are doing the work every day in our communities. Uh -huh. And we create environments where they can build authentic relationships. Mm -hmm. We provide education, you know, political education. That's and then we organize. We we get people into rooms you were together. Right we front strategize. Center with BLM. Yeah. 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 I saw you every day wow. doing your thing and I'm yeah. so proud of you for doing yeah, that. I That's can we can we talk about Insecure? Yes! <laughs> the little show. The little show. <laughs> the yeah, little yeah, show. Yeah, of course. What I feel about Insecure is that we get stories mm -hmm. that we can relate to. And the fact that they've, you know, done mental health, your character, mm -hmm. Nathan, is bipolar. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the fact that you get to talk about things that we normally don't get a chance to see on TV? Well, you know, I, that's what I always say. I, uh, Insecure is an activist show without being about activism, yeah. right? It's, yep. it's we're so always, great. my lawyer John Meigs always talks about how we're either portrayed as subhuman or superhuman, right? As black folks. We're yeah. like either criminalized and demonized or we have to be a hidden figure or some the first to do something, something. in order for so, to yeah. earn the right for our story to be told. Yeah. But Insecure, literally in the title, is baked into the culture of the show that we have to explore those gray areas, those insecure yes. areas, those unconfident areas. This is who we all are. And it but displays us flaws and all and in, in, in all our beauty and the things that we love. We love, you know, make the, the times that we made the worst decisions in our life mm -hmm. and the best in yeah. the same day. Right. right. And see how we navigate that. So I, I'm, you know, I get to play somebody from Houston mm -hmm. who experiences mental health problems, which is everybody in my family. So I have an obligation to portray right. that in a way that is so authentic great. and real, and then to use that to help liberate my nephews and nieces, mm -hmm. 24 of them, back in, you oh, know, wow. in Texas, you know, <laughs> and my brothers and sisters. Oh, I wow. love that. Well, great. let's check out a clip from Insecure. You the one that's been all inconsistent. What does that mean? It means you crying in my mouth one minute, then telling me that you want me the next minute. Then you want to take things slow. Now you're telling me you love me. What do you want from me? You all over the place. You know what? Let's just drop it. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> okay, bye. Oh, yeah, that. Kendrick, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging course, out with us. Of course. New episodes of Insecure air Sundays on HBO Max. Be sure to check it out.